embarrassing, really. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down the most sordid, unsettling, unnerving, and off putting facts about life during the Tudor period. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 20. Overcrowded Jails the penal system was characterised by its rudimentary approach, with overcrowded jails being a common issue. The concept of using decommissioned ships as floating prisons, known as prison hulks, was not prevalent in this era, but would later become a method for managing the excess prisoner population. Jails often faced severe overcrowding due to the lack of a structured penal system, leading to inhumane conditions for inmates. This period, spanning from 1485 to 1603, saw the justice system relying heavily on corporal and capital punishments, with jails primarily serving as holding areas for those awaiting trial or execution, rather than as facilities for rehabilitation. Number 19. Disease-ridden armies Armies were often plagued by diseases, a problem exacerbated by the conditions soldiers faced during campaigns. With limited understanding of hygiene and medical knowledge, these forces were highly susceptible to outbreaks of illnesses such as dysentery, typhus and the sweating sickness. The close quarters in which soldiers lived and marched, combined with poor nutrition and the lack of clean water, created environments where diseases could easily spread. Moreover, the medical treatments available were rudimentary at best, offering little relief and sometimes exacerbating the problems. This issue was not unique to the era, but was a significant challenge for military campaigns, impacting the effectiveness of forces and often causing more casualties than combat itself. Number 18. The Bedding Ceremony this traditional practice was deeply rooted in the customs of Tudor society and beyond, marking the consummation of a marriage. This ritual involved a symbolic process where the newlywed couple was escorted to their bedchamber by a group of attendees, often amidst ribald jokes and songs, emphasising the importance of producing heirs. Once in the bedchamber, witnesses might remain until the couple was physically in bed together, underscoring the communal interest in the legitimacy and succession of heirs. The ceremony reflected the era's views on marriage, sexuality and social order, highlighting the public nature of what modern societies consider private matters. While it might seem intrusive by today's standards, the bedding ceremony was a significant societal event, reinforcing alliances and securing dynastic continuity. Number 17. Food Adulteration During the Tudor period, adulteration of foods was prevalent. As urban populations grew and supply chains became more complex, the opportunity and incentive for unscrupulous vendors to dilute or alter their products increased. Common practices included adding fillers to bread, such as chalk or sawdust, to increase its weight cheaply, or using harmful substances to enhance the colour of wine and beer. These adulterations not only cheated consumers, but also posed serious health risks. The authorities attempted to combat these practices through various laws and regulations, but enforcement was challenging, to say the least. Number 16. Animal Cruelty for Sport Entertainment practices often involved activities that would be considered extraordinarily cruel by modern standards, including bear baiting. In this spectacle, bears were tethered to a stake in the arena and attacked by dogs, while spectators bet on the outcome and cheered. This form of entertainment was not only limited to bears, but also included bull baiting and cockfighting, reflecting a societal indifference to animal suffering for the sake of human amusement. Such events were common in public and even royal gatherings, highlighting the acceptance of animal cruelty as a form of entertainment. These activities underscore the stark differences in attitudes towards animals then and now. Number 15. Rodent-Infested Living Conditions Living conditions for many were characterised by close quarters and poor sanitation, which often led to homes and public spaces being infested with rodents. These pests were not merely a nuisance, they posed significant health risks, acting as vectors for diseases such as the bubonic plague, and we'll get to that a little later. The lack of effective waste management and urban planning contributed to the proliferation of rats and mice in both rural and urban settings. Efforts to control these populations were rudimentary and largely ineffective, reflecting the limited understanding of public health and disease prevention at the time. Number 14. Press Gangs the practice of press ganging, forcibly enlisting men into the navy, was a common method of crewing ships, especially in times of war or exploration. 
This form of impressment involved the use of coercion, with press gangs abducting men from their homes, taverns, or the streets to serve on naval vessels. Those taken were often given little choice in the matter and faced harsh conditions at sea, including strict discipline, hard labour and the constant threat of conflict. While impressment helped to meet the manpower needs of expanding naval ambitions, it also led to widespread resentment and fear among the populace as it disrupted lives and families. Number 13. Deadly Cosmetics the pursuit of beauty led to the widespread use of cosmetics that, unbeknownst to the users, contained deadly substances. Lead-based makeup was particularly popular among the nobility and wealthier classes, prized for its ability to create a fashionable pale complexion that signified status and wealth. However, the lead in these cosmetics was highly toxic, causing a range of health issues from skin damage to severe poisoning and, in some cases, even death. The dangers of these beauty practices were not well understood at the time, and the long-term effects of lead exposure were often attributed to other causes. Number 12. Rudimentary Medicine Surgical procedures were conducted without the benefit of anesthesia or effective pain relief, in stark contrast to modern medical practices. Patients undergoing surgery faced not only the fear of the procedure itself, but also the excruciating pain that accompanied it. Surgeons of the time relied on speed and brute strength to complete operations as quickly as possible to minimize the patient's suffering. Techniques to distract or temporarily incapacitate the patient, such as the use of alcohol or opium, offered limited relief and were not universally available or effective. This lack of pain management underscores the rudimentary state of medical knowledge at the time. Number 11. Star Chamber Proceedings this English court became infamous for its secretive proceedings and harsh judgments during the Tudor period. Established to deal with offences against the state that were beyond the reach of common law, it operated without a jury and often relied on written statements rather than oral testimony. The court had the power to enforce severe punishments, including fines, imprisonment and corporal punishment on those deemed threats to social order or the monarchy. Its methods, including the use of torture to extract confessions, were criticised for lacking transparency and fairness, leading to its reputation as a tool of political repression. The Star Chamber symbolises the tension between the need for state security and the protection of individual rights, a balance that societies continue to navigate. Number 10. Sumptuary Laws Regulations were designed to control consumption and enforce social hierarchy by dictating what individuals could wear, eat and own based on their social status, income and position. In the Tudor period, these laws were particularly detailed, reflecting the era's concerns with social order and the visibility of class distinctions. They aimed to prevent the rising merchant and middle classes from imitating the attire and lifestyle of the nobility, thereby preserving established social structures. For example, only individuals of certain ranks could wear fabrics like silk or colours such as purple and gold, which were reserved for the upper echelons of society. These laws also extended to the consumption of certain foods and luxury goods. Number 9. Poor Laws The brutal treatment of vagrants reflects the era's approach to poverty and social order. With the dissolution of the monasteries in the 1530s, which had traditionally provided for the poor, and the changing economic landscape, vagrancy became a significant issue. The authorities viewed vagrants with suspicion, often equating begging with idleness and criminality. Legislation sought to address these concerns through a mixture of relief for the deserving poor and harsh penalties for those deemed able-bodied and unwilling to work. The poor laws introduced measures for local parishes to support the indigent funded by taxes. However, these laws also sanctioned severe punishments for vagrancy, including whipping, branding and enslavement for repeat offenders. Number 8. The Reign of Bloody Mary Mary I of England, known historically as Bloody Mary, was the first Queen Regnant of England and Ireland, ruling from 1553 until her death in 1558. Her nickname stems from her zealous efforts to re-establish human Catholicism in England after the Protestant reforms of her father, Henry VIII, and her brother, Edward VI. Mary's reign is marked by her religious persecutions, where approximately 280 Protestants were burned at the stake for heresy in what are known as the Marian Persecutions. These actions were part of Mary's broader campaign to reverse the Protestant Reformation in her kingdoms, a campaign that included the revival of heresy laws and a strict enforcement of religious conformity. Number 7. Suppression in Ireland 
The Tudor suppression of rebellion in Ireland was a brutal and protracted process as English monarchs sought to extend and consolidate their control over the island. This effort was marked by military campaigns, the imposition of English law, and the settlement of English and Scottish Protestant in Irish territories, particularly during the reigns of Henry VIII, Elizabeth I, and into the Stuart period. The suppression of these rebellions often involved significant violence and harsh measures against the Irish population, including massacres, forced displacements, and the destruction of crops, leading to famine and suffering. These actions laid the groundwork for centuries of conflict and division. Number 6. Lack of Hygiene It wasn't just rodents, overall cleanliness in these times was rudimentary at best, reflecting the era's limited understanding of hygiene and its connection to health. Urban areas, in particular, suffered from poor sanitation, with open sewers common and waste often discarded in the streets. This lack of infrastructure contributed to the spread of diseases. In households, practices such as bathing were infrequent, partly due to misconceptions about the health risks of water, and partly due to the practical difficulties of heating water. People relied on linen undergarments and changes of clothing to maintain personal cleanliness with the belief that this could protect them from disease. Public baths, once popular, fell out of favour due to fears of contagion. Number 5. Religious Intolerance Persecution was a defining characteristic of the Tudor period, reflecting the era's tumultuous religious landscape. The reigns of successive monarchs, and not just Bloody Mary, saw England swing between Catholicism and Protestantism, with each change in religious policy bringing new rounds of persecution. Under Henry VIII, the break with Rome and the establishment of the Church of England led to the persecution of individuals who remained loyal to the Pope. His daughter sought to reverse the Protestant reforms, resulting in the Marian persecutions of Protestants. Elizabeth I, in turn, established Protestantism as the state religion, leading to the persecution of Catholics who were seen as a threat to her rule and the stability of the state. Number 4. Extracting Confessions The use of torture to extract confessions was a practice sanctioned under certain circumstances by the state, particularly in cases involving high treason or threats to the security of the realm. While English law generally prohibited torture, exceptions were made for matters concerning the well-being of the state, and the prerogative to authorise its use lay with the monarch or the privy council. Instruments and methods of torture included the rack, which stretched the victim's body, and the scavenger's daughter, a device that compressed the body. Other methods involved the use of thumbscrews and the application of heat or fire. Number 3. Public Executions Executions were not only a method of punishment, but also served as a form of entertainment and a tool for societal control. These events attracted large crowds of spectators who gathered to watch the condemned meet their end, often through hanging, beheading or burning. Executions were public spectacles, conducted in open spaces such as market squares or on hills, making them visible to as many people as possible. The entertainment aspect of public executions was part of a broader culture that found amusement in displays of suffering and violence intertwined. This practice would eventually decline as attitudes towards punishment, justice and human dignity evolved. Number 2. Bubonic Plague the Great Plague outbreaks, particularly those that swept through England during the Tudor period, were devastating episodes of disease that had profound impacts on society, economy and culture. The most notorious of these outbreaks occurred in the mid-14th century, known as the Black Death, but the plague returned in various waves throughout the era, notably in 1563 and again in the early 17th century. Symptoms included fever, vomiting, and swollen lymph nodes, or buboes, leading to a swift and often fatal end. The outbreaks resulted in the deaths of up to a third of the population in affected areas, causing labour shortages, economic turmoil, and social unrest. Number 1. Witch Hunts The infamous witch hunts swept through Europe, including England, from the late 15th century through to the 17th century and were a dark and tumultuous period marked by fear, superstition and the pursuit of heresy. While the peak of these hunts occurred slightly after the Tudors reigned, the foundations for such persecutions were laid during this period. Communities sought scapegoats for their misfortunes, and women, especially those who were elderly, widowed, or otherwise marginalised, were disproportionately accused. Legal frameworks, such as the Witchcraft Act of 1563 under Elizabeth I, criminalised the purported practice of witchcraft and consorting with evil spirits, leading to horrific and outrageous trials and executions. What aspect of life in the Tudor period do you think was the most disturbing? 
let us know in the comments. Do you think I shall die, my lord? Do you think I shall die? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.